when you walked in and saw it set up a little differently. Um, our uh, discernment team's been talking for a little bit about um, this opportunity that we've had upstairs to do things a little different. And uh, we had talked about doing a circle for a while and uh, just never did. And now it's almost time to go back downstairs and we're like, well, let's give this a shot and see how, see how things go. Um, one of the reasons to uh, set up a service this way um, is it should be a little bit less of a, like there's an audience and then there's, you know, performers or whatever, right? We're all together in the circle, right? And ideally, so like even the team that's going to lead music is part of the circle, right? Praise the Lord. And later when we do the uh, scripture, some of you guys have been given pieces of the scripture and we're going to read that across the circle and stuff like that. And uh, when it's sermon time, we're going to participate together also. So we're just going to try some new stuff today um, to try to, um, yeah, just be participatory um, and uh, be a, a little less uh, show up and consume, right? A little more, let's come and be together. So um, that's the, the idea behind setting things up this way. Um, our Restrooms remain in the same place, which is over there. If you're seated over here and need to go, just walk through. It's fine. No problem. No questions asked, all right? If we need to leave for any reason, the exits are still here and here. When we're done, you can use the elevator also, assuming there's no emergency. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, what we have as far as the nuts and bolts of today. We will have a time of praise reports and prayer requests in a little while, so you might want to be thinking about um, if you have anything to share with the body, because we want to come alongside you if you're praying for anything. We want to celebrate with you if you're celebrating anything. Um, I think that's most of the nuts and bolts for right now. We're going to begin our time with uh, our time of greeting. All right, so this is an, an opportunity for y'all to come into the circle and say hey to whoever. Walk across, right? You don't have to stay near the outside. I did find it funny. We set this whole round thing up, right? And which seats filled first? The ones right in the back, just like if it was, just like if we were in rows, it's still that back one that, that fills up. And uh, But I did encourage folks to sit in other spots, and I appreciate y'all that were like, okay, I'll try that. Um, so anyway, please come out from where you're seated and greet each other. We're going to sing a song that says, we're marching in the light of God. And then we're going to sing another one that says, I believe, I believe, oh my brother, I believe, oh my sister. And these both songs are in multiple languages. Um, if you notice somebody might have a harder time getting around, please make a special effort to go and see them. Uh, there are folks on Zoom. The Zoom is set up uh, through the camera now, is that right? So we've been waving at the camera. The people on Zoom will be able to see you. Um, and uh, so make sure to greet folks that are here virtually as well. All right? With that, uh, praise team will lead us, and we invite you to come and greet each other. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 See a humba. See a humba. See a humba. See a humba. See ya, humble, see ya, humble, oh, see ya, humble, see ya, humble, oh, see ya, humble, see ya, humble, oh, 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 see ya, humble, oh
going on in the life of the church, and it's, uh, yeah, it's hard to keep track of all of it, so we want to make sure that you guys have uh, a bulletin, and the, the little green insert on the inside gives you a little taste of all that's going on. One thing that's not going on, okay, one thing that's not going on is the BCM Peace Banquet, okay? BCM Peace Banquet was supposed to be this Thursday, and it's not happening, okay? We made the difficult decision to uh, cancel that and to put all of our efforts into the bowling fundraiser that'll be later in November, okay? Um, just keep uh, BCMP in your prayers. Those of you that had already planned to support uh, the banquet, we ask that you just roll over that support for the bowl-a-thon. Um, and the bowling event's gonna be a whole lot of fun, so uh, we uh, hope that you guys will choose to hang out with us. I believe it's on November 17th. Is that a Sunday? Does somebody know if November 17th is a Sunday? I think that's the right date. Um, if it's a Sunday, that's the right date. So um, anyway, that, that's uh, what's coming up in support of BCM Peace. This Friday, this Friday, thank you, it is on Sunday, cool. This Friday at the Hack Campus, Christian Churches United is having a really awesome um, event called Echoes of Hope, and they're partnering with um, Sankofa Theater Group, which uh, we have supported their work uh, for a lot, a lot of times. Um, Sharia Ben has written an original piece for the event, and it'll be a time of just enjoying um, some, some hors d'oeuvres and some live theater, as well as hearing more about what Christian Churches United um, has been doing. And so uh, we 
just want to make sure everybody knows about that event. That's this coming Friday at Hack, and you can get your tickets at the CCU website. If you need help figuring that piece out, please let me know. Um, yeah, All Church Council meeting is happening next Sunday. Um, so right after service, if you plan to hang out, we're going to talk some more about the core values of the First Church of the Brethren. And um, we're going to just talk about how this year of discernment has been going. And then um, also, what do we think we should be doing moving into the following year? Okay, um, So that's this coming, uh, this coming Sunday, one week from today, um, we'll be uh, having All Church Council right after service. BHA is having a little black dress event that's coming up in a couple weeks, and uh, disaster relief auction is next weekend. All kinds of different stuff going on. So, um, and I believe it's the Unity Walk next Sunday as well, Sister Ann. Um, so there, there's just so many things, and uh, we hope that uh, you'll keep it all straight first of all, <laughs> but that you'll um, also come and support um, all these different events. Okay. The next thing we're going to do, um, we're going to sing a song that's uh, called Peace Be Still and Know That I Am God. And this song was written to be sung in a canon. Who knows what a canon is? Around. Around. Oh, she said it. She's so excited. Did you hear? She said, around. <laughs> so we're seated in a round, and so we're going to try to sing it in a round. All right, so I'm gonna invite uh, Sister Juanita to come. She's gonna be with this corner here. Sister Donna's gonna be with this corner here. Darren and, Darren, well, you can you can get from your mom over. I get Joyce over, how about that? And you get Brother Jim with you. Nelson, you guys are with uh, Linda and Darren. All right, and then we'll chop. Like you can go that way if you want. Whatever you want. <laughs> All right? And really, nobody's going to keep track of which group you're singing with, so it's fine. It's fine. You, you sing with whatever group you want, all right? But this is how we're going to do it, all right? We're going to sing it all together the first time. All together, all right? And then Darren and Linda are going to come in with the first one, all right? And y'all here will come in with Darren and Linda, okay? Then Donna will bring in the second group. Hello. I'll bring in the third group. And Juanita will bring in the fourth group. And we'll do it through three times, and then we'll all end together. That's the idea. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right? Let's get the pitch from Alan. Don't get messed up. All right, let's sing together, church. Peace be still. Peace be still and know that I am God. Peace be still and know that I am. Peace be still and know. Peace be still.
We want to swim in the water. We want to dance. There is a river flowing, a river of joy and laughter. We want to swim in the water. We want to dance. journey 
and changing some of our windows three pages right towards the front of the magazine. Yes, it would be, I highly recommend everyone read this. And the third page also has the other, other picture on here. But the, the point is that it's it's all about our journey here in First Church, about how we've moved from the whitening of God to accepting God of all colors. God for all people. Jesus for all. And we thank Josiah for his uh, intelligence in creating this article, but we thank uh, all of us for being a, a great church here in Addison. Josiah for his intelligence, that's something else. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Um, I will say, um, I, I ran the that article when you read it. I, I did run it by Pastor Lexi and Drew also, so I got some collaboration. My name's on it, but there was a lot of work went into that. Who else has a praise report or prayer request? Lisa. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know if all yous knew that I was in the hospital a couple weeks ago with blood clots. I'm doing a little better than what I was, and I thank everybody for the prayers and everyone that was able to come visit me um, and continue to pray um, for me and my family. Amen. 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 I just want to say um, hello, church. Uh, today, I thank God that we're all here. Um, and fellowshipping together, I would just ask that could we all just pray for not only ourselves but for our community um, and um, our families. Um, right now I have some family things going on, um, some sisters get through some medical, um, but I do really want to take this time to ask that we all seriously pray for a friend of mine. She was in that nasty car accident um, a few nights ago that uh, took someone from us. It took a younger guy. Um, someone was lost in that accident. Uh, she she survived, but she's in you know ICU. It has some complications right now. So I just ask, could we pray for her as well, um, and along with the family who lost someone that night? Amen. Thank you. Um, prayers for peace in the Middle East. It's probably never looked worse. And prayers that the U.S. would be an agent for peace, something we have not done well. Uh, good morning. Uh, ladies all know that we have to get out and vote this year, let our voices be heard. And that was a good article that just, uh, that was a good article about the one Josiah has. Thanks, Christine, for writing it for him. <laughs> he can't be serious. He can't be serious for 30 seconds. I was like, oh, he did like a real prayer request there for a second. So I was, um, I had spoke to uh, Jerry Ford, and we've been praying for the loss of his son. And I didn't know if you knew, but he's lost two sons within a two-week period. Um, so it's. Probably one, even though he's, you know, been a soldier and and lots of things. This is a, a really rough burden to bear when your children pass away before you. So um, he also um, sent something, and I tried to do a group email so that you guys could see it and be in prayer. And I'll still try. I'll probably text it to Joe's, and then he can send it to you. But um, their funeral service is this Friday. And there's going to be a lot of people coming um, in which to celebrate their lives um, together. Um, I just ask that you continue to hold Jerry up and the family and traveling mercies. And that may it also be one of those things that can also fill you up with those blessed memories. Oh my gosh! Thank you, Jesus! All right. All the time. Um, I don't know uh, if everybody knows, but a couple of Saturdays ago, I got baptized, and my life is, is on a more, more clarity path. My brother just went back in the hospital, and um, I've been praying for him, but he knows what he needs to do. 
But on a good note, I was praying and praying and praying. My one sister, Vanessa, she took off a couple of years ago. And this morning, I was sitting there doing something on my phone, and Facebook popped up with notifications. And I was like, I'm not doing Facebook because my husband did some crazy stuff, and I don't do social media. So I pushed it, and her face was there, and I was like, just thanking God because when I go home, I hope that I can get in touch with her. I just want to let her know that her family is still here, and we love her, and we need to communicate. Family is so important because we are part of the Lord's family. Right. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I wouldn't know how to start, but I'm going to start something that I have done in the past week. I had a dear friend that is going through really, really hard time with her health. And I went down to Puerto Rico to help her. Because she is a wonderful lady. And not, let's not pray for someone that needs it. We all need prayers. Amen. We all going through some kind of problem ourselves. We don't tell everyone. Mm -hmm. But this lady is so wonderful mm -hmm. that that was the least I could do. Go out there and try to help the best way I can. So let's keep her in our prayer. And let's keep each and every one of us family same way. Thank you. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, good morning, church. I uh, just like to thank everyone for their prayers and well wishes. I just had my 125th treatment for cancer. Oh, Everything is okay. It's still there, but it's not moving anywhere. It's not spreading. So I'm very thankful for that. But I'd also like your prayers for a cousin of mine and my oldest surviving aunt who's in her 90s. Both of them are currently in the hospital. And I'd like prayers for both of them. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. I solicit your prayers. Y'all have not seen my son and my daughter-in-law in such a long, long time. But I'm just soliciting that y'all pray. For them, they're on, he's on his whole another level that he thinks that's right and that we're not right. So but just keep him in prayer. Keep him in prayer. And we're going to go in prayer. Thank you, Darren. Anybody else this morning? Praise reports, prayer requests. Yeah. Excuse me for not getting up. Um, I might break it up, but uh, I'm going to give thanks for everybody for your thoughts and prayers. Uh, and I lost a son uh, a week ago. Ten years apart. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But I, I guess that's for your thoughts and prayers, and uh, I'm going to be heading down uh, Philadelphia this week to the funeral. Uh, so I guess uh, just keep me in prayers. And uh, thank everybody. Amen. 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 Anyone else this morning? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer, church. Lord God, we thank you so much for today. Um, so much has been shared. Um, and we just need you to be God in these different situations. There's a lot, of, a lot of folks in this family of faith that are standing in the need of prayer. And um, we just are so thankful that it's not too big for you. We're so thankful that you care. And you don't promise that everything's going to be perfect or anything like that. But when we're mourning, you mourn with us. You feel all of this with us. God, for those that need physical healing this day, Lord, we know that you're the great physician, and we just lift 
ask that you would uh, show up in, in a miraculous fashion in all these different places. Uh, you can heal hearts and heal minds, Lord, and can change violence into the opposite. And we just lift up all those places, even within our own country, and and uh, particularly the Middle East was lifted up today. Um, we want to stand with the, the immigrant communities throughout our country also. Um, and of course, we particularly are, are thinking of, of those in Ohio. Um, the, but we, we recognize that you know, being an immigrant in this country can be really hard sometimes. And um, we just pray that you'll help us to be a, a safe space, that you'll help us to stand in solidarity with our siblings that are trying to make a better life for their families. Um, God, we, uh, we do lift up every, every single thing that was raised today, um, just so many health things. Um, that for any human would be too much, be overwhelming, but it's not overwhelming for you. And so we just pray that you'll make, um, make everyone whole, Lord. Mind, body, spirit, we pray for your shalom to be real, that your shalom will be real in this community, Lord. Um, in addition to the car accident that was mentioned today, we certainly lift up all those and the um, stuff in our families and um, there's been a lot of gun violence in our city the last month or so. A lot of lives lost. And God, we just we, we do pray for um, all these different situations. And we thank you, God, for being a good God. And we pray that you'll change hearts, that you'll change minds, and that your peace that surpasses all of our understanding will be the reality here. And when we talk about peace and we talk about shalom, that's that's not just the antithesis of violence. It's, it's about a flourishing. It's about a, a thriving of your creation, God. And that's our desire. God, we just thank you so much for uh, being a God that feels all this with us, for being a God that is big and can overcome all of it, but also a God that's accessible, a God that knows us, a God that cares, a God that'll do something. Thank you for hearing our prayers this day, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we humble ourselves before you and recognize your goodness this day. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, church. Um, you can hold on to that. I'll, I'll get it later. <laughs> We're going to continue. Yeah, Marilyn. Do you want the mic? No. Okay. Something is sticking in my head, 11. 90, 11. Can you help me with that so the church can hear that? 90, 11. Yeah. Somebody got something for that? Well, it's something about counting the days. Counting the days. It, it just stuck in my head. Okay. I think it was like Psalm 90, verse 11, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's what it is. <laughs> Anybody? No. Would you like Heather to read the verse? Yeah. Okay. So Psalm 90, verse 11. Is who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Keep going. <laughs> 12. Yeah. So teach us to count our days there it is. that we may gain a wise heart. Amen. Amen. That, that stuck out with me this morning. I don't know why, but I think it's very, very important to appreciate every day you open mm -hmm. your eyes. Yeah. Every yeah. Day. Amen. And that last bit, the wise heart, we're going to talk about wisdom in a minute. So, um, yeah. See when God does stuff. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you for speaking up, uh, Marilyn. We're going to continue in our worship um, as we bring the Lord a portion of all God has blessed us with. Um,
where I sing a song that says, humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and um, and then acknowledge um, our God's awesomeness. Mm -hmm. um, Nelson, while you're there, you want to just take the top off the basket right quick? Yeah. And then people can come as they feel lit. Baseball? Baseball? All right. How did your baseball season go? Um, 
problems and still go on and we're doing really bad. <laughs> or school is just okay and baseball's not going well. Do we call that fall ball? Yeah, fall ball. I, I remember that from my brother many moons ago. Are you playing on any sports team or any dancing or anything like that? No. no. Okay. okay. How about you, Brenda? Anything? Dance. Dance? Oh, well, how's your dancing going? Excellent, excellent. I really like those orange glasses. All right. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're, we're talking about Isaiah 40, 12 to 31, and I have some help from a nice little video that's going to tell us about how a girl did with her sports team and how it relates. Let's see. Oh, think about it. With I think her name is Bibi. Are we ready for Bibi? Oh, here we are again. something out of there, pick one. What'd you get, Brenna? I'm gonna take one and pass it on. What'd you get? Hmm. <laughs> what is it? into the trees, look up and see how powerful God is, know that he's there for us. And what did we see at the end of the video? Eagles. Very good, an eagle. We saw an eagle that God, even though you're feeling down in the dumps, 
He's there for you. Look up and think about the eagle. He gives strength for the eagle to what? Very good. Eagles flying. Fly. Fly. Very good. Very good. And you know, at the very end of this uh, section of scripture is one of the most wonderful verses that I know you all know because we have it as a song. Okay? So I'm going to say it. And we're going to practice doing the signs. You all are welcome to do the signs too to help you remember. Miss Ann does signs too sometimes for you, okay? So the end of the scripture is the hard for me to sign and hold this, okay? Those who wait, show me wait, wait upon the Lord. You guys can all do it too. Lord. L, you got your L? Cross your chest. Lord shall renew, renew, this is new, new, renew, their strength. Oh, yeah, we got strength. Yes. They will rise up on wings. Oh, Mom's back there doing a good job. Wings like, I'm going to teach you this. I actually looked this up. Eagles. You know eagles have this funny beak, okay? So take this. This is actually an X. And you hook it, and you hit twice. Eagles. Eagles. Very good, Miss Mary. Okay, eagles. They will run. Just pretend to run. Really, running is like this, but it's hard. Run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Amen. Teach. This is teach. Because what do we do with it? Where do we learn? In our brain. And a teacher is someone that takes knowledge and gives it to you. Right? Very good. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to wait. So we might want our answer right away, but sometimes we have to wait for God's answer. Okay? So, are we ready to try to sing this and do our signs? Thank you, Miss Winina. Very good. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall rise up with wings like eagles. Ready? They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. wonderful children, for the teens that are present, for the young adults, the middle-agers, the baby boomers, and the elders, the saints in our congregation. Thank you for bringing us here, Lord. Every single one of us, thank you for watching over us. Be with these children as they go through their year at school, on their sports teams, 
anything that they come across, let them know that God is there for them. Amen. 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 We're going to do our scripture a little differently today. Um, I think, I don't know if I put it in the bulletin as popcorn scripture or not. It's what I had in mind. So, um, we have eight different readers that are going to do a couple verses each. And uh, if you have number one, I think that's Nairin, right? And then who has number two? Miss Ann. I know Nelson has three, I think. You have number three? Three, right? Okay. And this comes from James chapter 3, verse 13, and goes all the way to chapter 4, verse 10. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace, loving, considered, submise, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemaker <laughs> who saw in peace weak harvest and righteousness. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You're, you desire, but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Grieve, mourn, and well. Change your laughter to mourning, and your joy to gleam. Humble yourself before the Lord, and He will lift you up. Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil, and He will flee from you. Come near to God, and He will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us, but he gives us more grace? That is why scripture says God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Amen. 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 Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and God will lift you up. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. All right. Some of y'all came in after the beginning of service and probably are wondering, why are we sitting in this round thing like this? This is weird. And maybe some of y'all explain it and still think this is weird. I said it was a circle of love. <laughs> it's a circle of love. That's right. That's right. Um, so the discernment team have been talking about a bunch of different things we could try. Um, given that we're upstairs and we don't have pews, we don't have to sit a certain way. And uh, being together um, in a circle was one of those things that we had talked about. And um, we just never really got to try it until today. So um, we've done a bunch of new things today, not just set the chairs up like this, right? Um, we did just the scripture a little different. We did a round, four parts round, that was fun. Um, all of this is sort of designed to help us to um, all be a part of what's happening, right? A lot of times when you can come to church, you can sit in a pew and, you know, you're sitting there and then me or Lexi is up front or the team's up, up on a platform somewhere. And it gives us the, the, 
the image that maybe we're just an audience of something, right? We're just here to observe, right? Um, but church is not about coming to observe. Church is about a family coming together to be a part of something, right? And so seated, being seated this way, you, like you, there's nowhere to hide, right? You're falling asleep, it's all right. I, I see you, it's fine. <laughs> you know, there's nowhere to hide. You can't be behind anybody else. We're all together, right? Come as you are. And that's the reason why I thought we could try that here. Some churches, this would not fly, all right? But we're, we are a church that generally um, invite you to come just as you are, whatever you're feeling, to feel it, right? Um, don't pretend, all right? Just, just be what it is, right? And, um, and that enables us to know each other better and know what each other's going through. That's one of the reasons we wanted to do the praise, time, praise reports and prayer requests, when we could really look at each other's faces, right? Not looking at the back of somebody's head while they share, but really, like, feel what's going on, you know? Um, there was a, a movement in the church, um, like, 20 years ago, called the Emergent Church. I don't know if anybody has heard about that. The emergent church model, um, sort of, churches, one of the things that happened was churches sort of sprouted up in places you wouldn't expect churches to sprout up. Okay, that's one of the things that happened. Um, one, uh, one of the ones I remember was a, a church that uh, was begun in like a discotheque in Germany, right? You wouldn't expect a church to be there. But there was one. Um, another one was started on the West Coast. Um, in this kind of communal area where they, they have this yearly thing called Burning Man, and there was a church that was started there. Some of y'all are not in your head. Some of y'all are like, what is Burning Man? If you want to know, talk to me later. I can explain it. It is wild. Um, but anyway, a church started there. Um, basically the idea that church can be wherever people are. Wherever God's creation is, that's where church can be and should be. Um, the second thing was trying to get at this whole um, let's not come and consume, let's come and participate, let's come be together. And so part of that movement, um, a lot of their worship spaces would look similar to this. I imagine that some of theirs would be multiple circles, right? But um, setting things up in a circle, they one thing that they did that I did not do because it is not my skill set, they put a lot of time and effort into the centerpiece. They'll put something really meaningful um, so that whoever's leading would actually, most of the time, like be seated, right? Because we're just part of the thing. And then all eyes are sort of on whatever the centerpiece is. Um, so that's some of where this setting up in, in the round sort of comes from is um, this emerging church sort of situation. Often the sermon <coughs> during something like that is not going to be somebody standing here talking for 20 minutes. And so today that's not, our sermon's not going to be me standing here talking at y'all. I hope that you were able to hear some of the verse as, as they were read. If you want to pull it up for your own, um, you know, looking at it, Pull it up on your phone or in your Bible. It, it is James chapter 3, 13 to chapter 4, verse 10. Instead of like a me lecture kind of situation today, um, we're going to have a conversation. And I'd love to hear from you guys what uh, you've gotten out of um, some of this. Now, if y'all decide not to participate at all, that's fine. I'm ready. <laughs> Um, you should know me by now. I can fill, fill it and talk a lot. I would love to not talk a lot. Um, but, uh, yeah, so for today, this is going to be sort of a, a conversational, maybe facilitated conversation around the scripture that we read. Um, so it's similar to the other text. We, we've been looking at James a lot the last month or so, you might remember. And James is very much about telling us just in, in very clearly sort of how we should live, right? Um, this text begins with, with the writers talking about what wisdom is. What, what is wisdom? And so it was really cool that 
Ms. Marilyn brought up a verse about counting our days that we might have true wisdom, right? And now we're going to talk about um, what is this true wisdom? What does the writer say there at the beginning? What is wisdom? How, how do we exhibit that we are wise in that first verse there? Somebody. Anybody. Actions. Speak louder. Actions. Actions. Here, I'm going to pass this to you real quick. Say it. Actions speak louder than words. Yeah. Leading a good life, but not like prosperous. Like do it, right? We show our wisdom by the way that we live. That's what the, the verse more or less says, right? So what does that look like? What does it look like to show wisdom by the way we live? Come on, somebody knows. Right thing. Do the right thing. What's the right thing? Love. Love. Okay. Being a Christian. Live our lives full of love. Be a Christian. What does that mean? Um, following God's word. Using your gifts to serve others. Using your gifts to serve others. That, listen. In the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit fell in that place and all the different spiritual gifts were, you know, given out, it wasn't so that, you know, everybody would praise Darren for his good voice, right? Darren was given the, the gift of praise. He was been given that voice that leads people into worship for God's glory and to edify the body, right? And Darren uses that gift very well. Using our gifts for others, yeah. And um, it can also be very much more literal, right? Using our gifts, like using our money for others, right? Using our time for others, stuff like that. Okay, what else? What does it look like? We've heard love, we've heard use our gifts for others. I think the, the thing that really stands out to me when, when I look at that is... is Everything that everyone has said is absolutely true, but what's, what stands out to me the most is to do so humbly. Mm -hmm. And like, if you're doing so for your own promotion or doing so to gain some benefit, um, whether it be something you envy or some, you know, something you want, um, or I, I want an easier life like so-and-so has, or I want nicer clothes like so-and-so has, like, so I, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Like, if that's, uh, if that's what you're doing, and I'm kind of reminded of two weeks ago, we talked about, you know, faith without works is dead. And this is saying to me, works without faith, is deadly. Yeah. If we use what God has given us for our own benefit, that is, that's not right. That's not what we're supposed to do. That's right. So, the first thing that really sticks out to me is we got to live right. Right? Being people that exhibit wisdom means living the way we know we should. Using our gifts for others. It's very much like an outward focus, very much a focus on the other, very much um, not about me, not about what I get out of it, very much about um, blessing God and blessing others, which really does come down, like the, when we think about Jesus, um, two great commandments, love God, love others, right? Um, so that all kind of falls in line pretty well. Okay, so the next couple verses, 14 and 15, let's move on to that. Um, the, the writer talks a lot about the wisdom of this world and what does that look like. Um, and in scripture you might notice there's a, couple, a bunch of different places where it's like, here's this list of bad stuff and here's this list of good stuff and you should choose the good stuff, right? Um, and here's just another example of that. The list of bad stuff is kind of short, but then it says, but it leads to all the other bad stuff, right? Um, so what is that what is that bad that the scripture is talking about in 14 and 15 that leads to everything else 
what uh, jumped out at me is the word uh, selfish and selfishness. And I don't think that means we should not be concerned about ourselves. Of course we're concerned about our health and our general welfare. I think selfishness has to do with being blind to what's going on to other people. And it talked about you know, selfish mindset and conduct leading to disorder and destructive acts. Yeah. Again, just that focus on me versus my focus on others. So it talks about, I grew up thinking that ambition was a good thing, right? So, but that word that goes in front of it, selfish ambition, right? Bitter envy and selfish ambition are the two kind of things that the writer points out as leads to all kinds of other evil, right? Bitter envy and selfish ambition. Yeah, that word selfish, that's a big one. Anything stick out to anybody else, those two verses, 14 and 15? How does, how does everything bad come from that? How is that possible? They're both bad. They're both bad, right. Both of those two things. But like, if you think about like how does... I mean, he kind of flat out... He, the writer kind of flat out tells us later um, how they connect the dots there. And we'll get there in a little bit. But have you thought about like evil that's in the world... It kind of can be broken down to envy and selfish ambition. If you think about it, think about something evil that's going on, and think about how how is envy of what others have, and how is selfish ambition like the root cause of some of that? And it really, I mean, I I have a hard time thinking of something that doesn't boil down to that on some level, or doesn't have some of that in there. Like maybe with us in America and other countries. For sure, for sure. All the all the evil stuff that has happened in our history, um, there's there's hate in there for sure. There's fear in there, um, but a lot of it comes down to greed and envy and selfishness. A lot of it. Certainly, the destructive, the destruction of the environment is all centered around greed. We want more and we only want it for us. And we don't care how it impacts anybody else. Right, we don't care how it impacts anybody else in the world, but we also don't care how it impacts people in 20 years. <laughs> right, um, yeah. All right. So then the writer goes to like the good stuff. What, what does heavenly wisdom look like? And we talked about already what is sort of living a, a wise life, like living out our faith. What does that look like? Um, but it lists off a bunch of, of really good stuff in there. Did, did anything stick out to anybody there? The end of chapter 3, that list of, of what uh, God's wisdom looks like. The antithesis of bitter envy and selfish ambition. Any of those words? Yep. Related to um, the wisdom of the world, the wisdom of God, um, one of the things that came to my mind earlier when we were talking about, you know, what does it mean? What does a Christian look like? What does it mean to, you know, live a good life and everything? And something that I don't think, I think this is something that was not articulated quite this way, but I was, it came to my mind was following the example of Jesus. Um, Jesus is uh, mentioned in some of the other letters uh, in the New Testament as being kind of um, the uh, the human example or demonstration of, of, of wisdom. You know, Paul, I think, uh, talks a little bit about Christ as being the fulfillment of the wisdom of God. And um, I was thinking a little bit about that in relation to Pastor Josiah's question here. Um, and just my experience over these last several years of living here in Allison Hill and specifically here on Hummel Street where our congregation, uh, where our faith community is. And um, thinking of, you know, living the example of Jesus or following, learning more what it's like to live like Jesus and the wisdom of Jesus, the wisdom of God through Jesus, 
Um, I think of wisdom looking like um, service, um, selflessness, um, sacrificial, meaning, you know, others, putting others before myself. And specifically in this regard, um, as much as we think of uh, safety and security, I know Pastor Darrell has talked some about, you know, false security versus true security. Um, and, you know, a little bit what Sister Ann mentioned a little while ago about, you know, um, things, um, you know, not wanting to give up, uh, you know, always being concerned about, uh, you know, our own self-care or, or, or things for ourselves, not to sound selfish or anything. I also think about this in an example uh, just here real quick that I encountered where I kind of saw this play out. You know, a lot of times when I leave the church and I walk usually by myself two blocks down the street, I will often run into some neighbors here on Hull Street. And, you know, and after we exchange a, hey, how's it going, and everything, usually I hear them say something to me like, um, stay safe take care, you know, and I know a little bit what they mean and what, you know, where this is coming from, and I usually then tell them the same thing. On one occasion, real quick, um, as I was walking home one night, there was uh, some chaos and some things kind of uh, starting to break out uh, down the road here on Hummel Street, close to my apartment, and um, the good thing is that I had some neighbors right up the road as I was walking home um, actually saw me and they recognized me and they ran out and they told me, Mark, don't go down there. Um, there's a fight going on. And uh, now, what I could have done was, was, was kind of brush you know, their words aside and be like, ah, it's no big deal, you know, this happens quite a bit, I can get home, no problem. But I didn't do that. I heard what they said. I realized, uh, no, these are neighbors who are familiar with the neighborhood here. They know, uh, you know, when it's safe, when it's not safe to, you know, move or anything like that. So I asked them, I said, you know, obviously they knew of my vision impairment. And so I asked them, I said, um, what's it like down there? Can you see anything? Tell me a little bit more about what that's like. And so they were describing a little bit. Meanwhile, there's a young mother saying, you know, I need to get back inside to my children. You know, my babies are in there. And I said, okay, why don't you go back in? I'll see if there's someone else who can help me out and answer some of my questions. So, you know, so they did that. And, um, and so I was able to um, get a hold of, of some other people who were around and they gave me a little more information what I needed, long story short, or to ultimately I was able to get home, I was safe, I encouraged some other neighbors who were on their porches to get inside as well as they told me, you know, get inside immediately. Um, but what I'm getting at all this here is getting back to, you know, again, the wisdom of God, the example of Jesus, I saw in neighbors here on Hummel Street, uh, when they see someone, willing to go out in the streets to make sure that they're not just simply safe, but that everyone in the community is taken care of. Everyone in the community uh, keeps safe and everything like that. And sometimes there's a risk when you know uh, something's going on and you could put yourself in danger in order to save someone else. Uh, for me, that's one example of, of, of looking uh, to the wisdom of God, looking to the wisdom of Jesus, and seeing that example. Yeah, so keeping that focus outward, um, keeping that focus on not me, right? Keeping that focus on us. I think this connects with what Mark was saying about risking yourself, but the verse that comes up to me about what is wisdom from above is being full of mercy, and what does it look like, not just to interpret peaceable as no conflict, but what does it mean to be full of mercy and stand up for others or for myself, and just that being the example of, of Jesus, this holistic mercifulness. In some ways, like um, Mark's illustration, those that put themselves out there for him really embody that mercy, right? All right, I know our time's getting, so. Um, there's something that happens um, once the writer kind of 
shows the same antithesis of that inward, that selfish, right? Um, which is the thing that leads to all kinds of bad, right? And then the juxtaposition of the outward, the mercy, the peacemaking, the um, all of that, and how how one leads to all kinds of good and one leads to all kinds of bad. Um, the last thing that I just want to make sure that we see here in the in the verses that we shared together is that the writer really does show like that we cannot possibly straddle this line and do both. Okay? We cannot. We cannot. Um, use this language like double-minded. In inward violence, like battling with ourselves on the inside. Because we want to do all this stuff that serves us, right? But we know that we're not supposed to. We know that what we're called to do um, we obviously have to care for ourselves some, as Sister Ann points out. We can't be completely selfless to where we're harming ourselves, right? We need to make sure that we take care of us so that we can take care of others, for sure. But we, we cannot get caught up in this bitter envy, in this selfish ambition. And um, the writer goes as far as to say, did you notice how the writer addresses them after he talks about, you know, you cannot be a friend of the world and a friend of God. What did he call them? Or what did the writer call them? I have no idea who wrote it, to be honest. Does anybody remember? Throughout the book, it's, it's brothers and sisters this, brothers and sisters that. It's like, listen, hear what I'm saying, brothers and sisters, right? And then it says, no, it calls them double-minded, but before that, Adulterers. Adulterers. What are adulterers? What are adulterers? Who knows what an adulterer is? Somebody say it. Come on. Somebody who breaks a vow. Somebody who is supposed to be with somebody, but they instead are with somebody else, right? That's what an adulterer is. Okay? Sure. Yeah, cheaters. Okay? Fair. So how... how why does he use that phrase? Why does the writer use that to address them? It's all brothers and sisters, this and that, and then all of a sudden it's adulterers. Because when we put self before, we're away from God, we're cheating God. When we choose the world over God, when we choose the, the, the things of this world over our first love, we are, we are as adulterers. That's one reason, for sure. Thank you. The other reason is, throughout Scripture, um, that phrase is used to get people's attention. I was reading a, a what is it called? True to our native land is what it's called, the African American commentary. And the, the guy that talks about James is like, really what he's doing there is as you're reading, it's all brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, and you hit that adulterers, and that's supposed to shake you. It's supposed to say, hey, get your act together. Hear this. This is really important, right? Um, that's why the writer uses that. Doesn't want you to just blow by it. Super important that we cannot straddle the line. We cannot serve both our own interests, right? Our own riches, our own like earthly stuff, and be a part of what God has in store for us, and live our lives for God. It's as if we are adulterers if we try to do that. Um, all right, I think we'll just wrap up for today. But, oh, Joy, you want to say something? No, Go ahead. I mean, Hold on. So, Wait until I get there. They need to hear it if you're going to say it. Um, so I, the other piece that's really important is you've got to ask God, okay? So, again, it's not that self. We're, we're reaching out. And, and then it says if you don't ask, hmm. <laughs> So it does say it does say that we, we don't have because we don't ask, right? Does that mean that we're gonna get whatever we ask? No. No. It even says that right there. So sometimes you do actually ask, but you don't get it because why? Because you're asking. Straddling the line. Because you're yeah, you're being adulterer. You're, you're asking with the wrong motives at heart, right? And we've talked about that before, at church, where um, as we submit to God, as we um, pursue God as we ask God for things and 
We need to also be asking God to change our hearts, to change our desires, so that our desires are closer in line day by day with what God's desires are. And then when we ask, we'll get it because it's the same, right? My heart and God's heart become one. Um, and, uh, and then God's free to give it to us. Um, but don't get that part twisted and, and think that God's just, you know, an ATM machine is going to give you whatever you press the button. You know, it's not how that works. We have a lot of work to do ourselves where we get ourselves in right alignment so that what our desire is, what, what, uh, what the desire of our heart is, and what God's desire and God's heart become one and the same. And then, of course, God will give it to us. You want to say something, Marilyn? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, last week, as I was listening to you and you were talking, okay. Um, the Lord always, he, he always desires for us to, to prosper and, and uh, you know, be kind and gentle to each other. But what about the, all the people that are deceived because they're listening to that loud voice? The one that, that's the one that's selfish. That's the voice that's selfish and destructive. And, and, and uh, it, it, it has no limitations, no limitations at all. So I, I'm trying to, to learn to always calm myself, get in a quiet space, and then I can feel the Lord's presence with me. But a lot of people have been so deceived for so many years that they don't know that there is a soft voice. So that's when we come in uh, uh, as Christians, not being selfish, but just to let them know that He is real. Mm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So often the the knee jerk reaction that we have to like, oh, I gotta do, like so often that's not right. <laughs> so often if we take that minute, that thirty seconds, take that step back, breathe, reflect, am I being moved to do this of my own? Or am I being moved to do this of the Spirit, which is moving me? You know? Is it the still small sometimes, voice or is that super loud voice that Mary was talking about? Yeah, and sometimes your influences, the people around you. Now, I, I discovered that the Lord removed a lot of people out of my life because they were not my friends. Mm -hmm. And I understand now it wasn't their intention. But the devil is, a, is, is he's, he's very deceitful. Oh, yeah. He's very deceptive. Mm -hmm. So he, he would bring people to me, and I was looking at them like they were my friends, but they had no good intentions for right. me whatsoever. That's right. And the Lord removed that all. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And that's, you know, those, those last verses are, you know, flee the devil. Flee mm -hmm. any kind of temptation. Flee that. Get rid of that. Right? Pursue God. Right, and and as we pursue God, it says also that those temptations will flee also. Yeah, so some of that gets removed, you know, the, the better decisions we make. But it doesn't mean that it's always going to be easy. There's all all the time going to be all kinds of temptation, all kinds of stuff in our path. Yeah, that's when he. Uh, that's when um, the evil one attacks you even more when he knows that you have stepped into the light. So he would throw everything, everything but the kitchen sink at you. Try to get you back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come back to the world. Sure, sure. No, we want to leave the world and take yeah. it across. Yeah, okay. Good stuff. All right, well, we'll just wrap up for today. Um, just like the previous weeks, uh, looking at this letter, uh, James is again giving us this instruction, how we need to live. Living with integrity, right? Living... Uh, that way, living our, our lives for others is the surest sign of wisdom. Not giving into envy, not giving into selfishness and ambition, because those two things lead to all kinds of evil. So, our encouragement is to choose the ways of God over the ways of the world, to align our desires more fully with God's and God's will. Um, and then God will give us what we ask for because we'll be asking for what, what God wants, anyways. We need to live our lives full of integrity, embodying the wisdom of God, fleeing what the world would offer and what de the devil would tempt us with. 
fleeing temptation, drawing near to God and the ways of God, humbling ourselves that we might be lifted. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And amen. Our uh, last song today is uh, Guide My Feet. And if we could just do a, get a starting chord, we can just sing this kind of acapella. Guide my feet while I run this race. Guide my feet while I run this race. Guide my feet while I run this race. For I don't want to run this race in vain, race in vain. I said, now hold my hand while I run this race. Hold my hand while I run this race. Hold my hand while I run this race. For I don't want to run this race in vain. Let's do search my heart. Search my heart while I run this race. Search my heart while I run this race. Search my heart while I run this race. For I don't want to run this race in vain, race in vain. I said, now guide my feet while I run this race. Guide my feet while I run this race. Guide my feet while I run this race. For I don't want to run this race in vain, race in vain. For I don't want to run this race in vain, race in vain. Praise the Lord. God, we thank you so much for today. We pray that you will help us to live our lives in a selfless way, Lord. That we take care of ourselves for sure, but that we would use our gifts, Lord, to better other people's lives, Lord. That we would pursue you, that we would flee temptation, Lord, this day. That we would um, just be your body, Lord God. God, use us the way you want to. Be with us as we leave this place today. We just thank you so much for um, this family that you've gathered together. For those that couldn't be here today, we lift them up, Lord. All those things that were shared during our time of praise reports and prayer requests, Lord. We just lift up everyone that's going through it today, Lord God. Both in this space and outside of it, Lord. And we just uh, thank you for hearing our prayers. God, guide us, direct us, move us, Lord. Help us step into what you want us to be about. That we might um, just live our lives full of mercy. That we would build peace, Lord. Um, that all those would experience your love. That all would experience your shalom this day. God, we just love you and thank you for all these things and many things unsaid. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Amen.